acceptance means that we know that everything that's happening around us is exactly the way God Almighty intends it to be at this moment in time. On the on the one hand, on the other hand, He wants us to react in a different way. That it shouldn't be like this. He, maybe there's actions that He wanted us to take in the past that it would be different. We want to make sure this message gets to every single human being. Won't you please help support this work? We need your help to get this message out to every Jew and every non-Jew. The actions to take, have your money come to RabbiSmith.org so that we can get a message of hope to every human being. But what does it mean practically is that we're not supposed to be living with this dread, a sense of impending doom. Meaning to say, the, the God... God Almighty is running the world. He's running everything. He's running every single detail. The only thing that's not in the hands of God Almighty, so to speak, is our own fear of God or whether we are in awe of, awe of God Almighty. But there's, we can gravitate towards a kind of a doomsday scenario and think that that is the way it's going to unfold. And then we make decisions based on that, which actually that negative anticipation leads to the unfolding of exactly what we are anticipating because we are looking towards that rather than steering clear of that, realizing we don't know how the good, the details of how God Almighty's good, uh, the good that he has in store for every single human being is going to unfold. But if we trust and believe and have faith, and that's what we're guiding towards, then we're going to be much more lighthearted. We are going to be much more inspiring to other people. So it's very important because if we're going in a state of, of negative anticipation and we're making choices that are short-circuiting and short-selling ourselves and the people around us for what's the goodness that's really possible. And we see that God Almighty is always turning back negative things from happening. So why do we think it's somehow holier to think that the negative things are going to happen um, and that and kind of and focus on that? So that's what we have to really be really careful about because it drags other people down around us. You know, it's interesting. You know, there's books from the 1970s, the coming economic collapse. You could buy There's these books that, that the people who were concerned you know, were buying gold in the 1970s. Now, the fact of the matter is there have been a lot of measures taken to destabilize the American economy since the 1970s over the last 50 years. But a person, if a person was sitting around watching it unfold, they're missing a lot of joy and a lot of good things that have happened in the last 50 years that were not involving economic collapse. So what have what has that person accomplished? Basically, what they did is that they picked up on a on a true point that there are people who wanted to stabilize the economies of every country in the world, and then they became focused on that. They became hyper focused on that negative possible outcome, those negative plans, and then every day they're walking around with their with their heart in their mouth, so to speak, afraid of that outcome. But then there's all the beauty of everyday life that's being missed. So, what can? How do we? How are we supposed to go through the day? So we have to go through the day realizing that first and foremost, God Almighty wants us to serve Him with joy. So if my mind is focused on the negative things that could happen, as much as I might have evidence for them, but the reality is I'm not able to serve God Almighty with joy while I'm thinking what impending do. Plus, I don't know that I actually have an accurate perception of quote-unquote impending doom. There's people that are walking around certain about how bad things are going to be. God forbid. But how do they know? How do I know what exactly is going to happen at what speed? And who is going to be affected at what speed and what timing? Who knows? And plus, we even if people have bad plans, we want to be 
we don't want to be falling into their bad plans. Their bad plans are that people should be walking around with a sense of despair and gloom and doom. Well, if that's what we're walking around with, even though we're saying it's because of those bad guys, we're still exactly where they want us to be. So we really have to take stock and take responsibility that my responsibility right now is to be in a state of joy in the service of God Almighty. And to take from that place, I can actually take much better actions that are actually going to turn around the situation for myself, for my family, and for the world as a whole. So that really dovetails with what we're talking about, going to talk about today in the learning with Rabbi Steif. Because Rabbi, what we're talking about in this learning with Rabbi Steif is where the general chapter, general concept of um, not serving idols. And specifically in chapter 35 over here, we're not to walk in the ways of those who, whose actions and thoughts and speech and are in foreign to the service of God Almighty. That, and we're going to see that both Jews and non-Jews required are required to not go in the ways of those whose um, service is foreign to that, to the service of God Almighty. So what we're going to focus on today is actually on speech and not emulating the ways of speech of those who's, who are foreign to the service of God Almighty. But I'm gonna. I want to tie it back into what we're just exactly what we're talking about over here, and we'll see. Okay, Doctor Schmitz has put a note to everyone that they can help with anxiousness and sorrow. That's something that's really um, troubling a person. They have a, a, a way of helping in their expertise around health um, and but the key is that we're going to see that it's it's really about a choice and what we're going to think about we always have a choice and that's what we're going to see right now let's take a look inside let me bring this up over here on the screen so we're up here in chapter uh, paragraph 13 sorry if you uh, chapter so last week we were talking about uh, last time we learned together uh, if you go back you'll see that we were talking about not building buildings and structures that emulate the ways of those who are stuck in thinking that this world is the main thing so therefore they built these massive buildings because they think that the main focus of life is in this physical world and we said we don't want to emulate that so another way we don't want to emulate the ways of those whose um, service is foreign to the service of God Almighty. The things that they do are foreign to the service of God Almighty. The children of Israel need to also be separated from them, from the non-Jewish way of acting and being that's foreign to the service of God Almighty. Also in their speech. In the way that a ch uh, one of the children of Israel speaks has to be different from what is considered acceptable and what is considered typical among the non-Jews. The Sefer Brisma should sign alzeh lesaper the Sefer Davra Hamelach, and in the holy work the covenant of Moses, he he um, cites to another holy book the uh, words of the king. Shakasa v'zela shaynu. He writes, and this is the words that he used. The main point is that it's necessary for the man who is straight, that is, has the awe of God Almighty on his face. He should not fall into the, the, the depths of, of the, the, um, the parched places of, of thirst where meaning to say there's no Torah, there's no knowledge of God and of uh, means to say of being lost. To stay away from everything that the non-Jews are doing. 
in, in the details of their customs, in their clothing, in their speech, and in the way of their walking. Like it says, um, it says in the book of Proverbs, stay away from it, from their ways. Now let's look that up over here. This is from the book of Proverbs. King Solomon writes here in verse 8. Distance your ways from her and do not draw to the, near to the entrance of her house. So, on, on, the, on the what King Solomon is referring to over here, it says, Lest you should give to others your glory and your years to a cruel one. And now if we look here in the simple meaning of the verses, that lest you give your years, your uh, lest you give others your glories, lest you, what he says over here, Rashi says, lest you turn your heart to other gods to give them the glory of your beauty and your praise and your years to the cruel one, to the prince of Gehenna, to the, so to speak, the, 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 um, one put in charge of running the um, place where a soul goes to be refined after a person when a person fails to live up to their potential in this physical world. So, and he continues here about different things to avoid and stay away from. So, the quote over here is saying, stay away. Stay away from all these distractions that are going to, you, you have your, every human being is created in God Almighty's divine image. Every human being has um, incredible gifts of, like he says over here, your beauty and your praise, your ability to, to see things correctly and to serve God Almighty and to praise God Almighty and to use all the beauty of what it means to be a human being in the service of God Almighty. Don't dissipate that and give that over to other to other places. Um, Messiah, and he concludes in the in the holy work that is being quoted over here. Messiah Sham to Oyle Enoim Shakach Royim Asher Benenu Hid Hadur Nifrats. And and Oy means to say like uh, what a tragedy to the the eyes that this is what they see, that with our sins, the, the generation is is nifrats, it's it's breaking out, it's it's um it's becoming dissipated, its energy is becoming dissipated. Everyone's doing all this effort, putting all their energy into trying to come close to the ways of the nations. which is the opposite of what we've explained, the Malbush, Minhagin. In, in the ways in which they're emulating the ways of the of the non-Jewish nations in their clothing, in the way that they conduct themselves in their in their traveling, so to speak, in their their journey through life and their customs. So should, and those that are simple and, and pure in the way of traveling in the Torah of God Almighty. They receive the reward for their walking in the path of good. So, what what the what the Rabbi Shtaif is bringing over here is the the degree to which we who want to stay on the path of God Almighty have to stay away from the customs and from the behaviors and the speech and the dress and the clothing and the, everything that's going on in the world around us to. By people who, that that that's being adopted by people who have lost sight of the service of God Almighty, so we could see this in many many different ways. And he's bringing out over here that we're not just talking about things that are forbidden. Means to say, if it's the clothing of idolatry, we already know that's forbidden for a Jew and for a non-Jew to to wear those those clothing. If it's immodest clothing, that it's it's improper dress for a man or a woman. We already know, we're going to learn later on when we get into the laws of morality, that those are forbidden. But here he's talking about even more subtle things, 
where it's not directly necessarily in a way of, of fighting against God Almighty. It's not a directly idolatrous way. It's not in a um, necessarily a explicit, um, inappropriate way. But what it is, is it's taking away from the focus of our energy into the service of God Almighty. So there's a crudeness, there's a sense of prioritization, just like we learn in the last time we learned together, we're not building buildings that are emphasizing the primacy of this physical world. So too, well, there are things that people are doing and that the, the nations get distracted and they start to conduct themselves in ways that are taking away from the best use of energy in the service of God Almighty. So a person who wants to stay in the proper path in the service of God Almighty has to make sure to stay away from those things. He has to make sure that he's going to stay focused. And it may seem difficult, and it is difficult, because the person is looking around, everyone around him, it seems, is going in a different path. Everyone's adopting the haircuts and the dress and the, the way of talking and so forth of the non-Jewish nations around them. And then the person is going to stay strong and he's going to say, I'm not going to go in these paths because this is not the way. Have a good day. This Have a good day. This is not the way of the service of God Almighty. This is not the way of the children of Israel. So it's a challenging because everything is around him seems to be going in the other direction. So that's why the, he writes over here that there's a reward that comes for this. This staying focused and staying in a way of proper service of God Almighty, staying in the refined way, the way of the children of Israel, in the ways of the Torah, in the ways of God Almighty's Torah, is itself something that brings reward. And we have to realize that this conduct that we do this staying on the proper track actually provides it's an it's a it's an inspiration for other people. We have to recognize that that people see us, every Jew and every non-Jew who makes the right choice and stays in their speech, in their way of doing business, in their way of dressing, in their way of conduct, stays in the proper uh, course, in the proper path then everyone around sees that. And on one hand, there's two simultaneous reactions, two simultaneous ways of relating to the person who's making the right choices. On one hand, it looks like the person is, is not paying attention because he is drawn to the social pressure and to the ways of the people around him. On the other hand, there's a level of respect. There's a level of seeing, oh, this is the way in which a person should conduct themselves. So now to return to what we were speaking about before, is that this, the purity of the attitude and the approach and the way we think and the way we speak is something that the whole humanity is depending on. You see, if a person, if one of the children of Israel starts to take on the way of thinking, the way of speaking, and the way of dressing, the way of walking of the non-Jewish nations that are confused and not uh, and, and are not focused on the service of God Almighty, <laughs> excuse me, then that's bringing the whole world down. There is that takes away the beacon from the world of what proper conduct looks like. What does proper way of speaking look like? So I'll give you a couple examples here. So one is that we see that if we look around us, we see that the general standard of people around us, uh, not, not necessarily bad people, people just going through their daily lives, is not to make reference, not to speak about God. People don't have God Almighty's name on their lips. They're not speaking about God. They're not thanking God. They're not referring to God. They're not expressing anticipation of good things happening from God. They're not seeking God Almighty's um, strength and, and for their success and so forth. So for a person who does recognize God, it can become very tempting that when he's in different experiences, different social settings, people are not speaking about God. 
he can stop talking about God because it it seems out it it's it's not with it. So our job is to recognize no that we're not going to adopt that way of speaking, that way of being, that way of talking, and become quiet in our expression of certainty that God Almighty is with us and has been and will be. And on the contrary, we are going to speak about God Almighty, and we are going to actually realize that we have a heightened responsibility to speak about God Almighty because other people are not. If you're in a culture that people are recognizing that there's, there's a God in the world and they're speaking about God Almighty, then, then you should too, but the, the, everyone else is, is already doing it, so it's just part of the flow. But when the flow is going in the opposite direction, it becomes even more important for you to mention God. So, a very simple example. If you're going to the store to buy gas, what are you going to say to the gas attendant, to the person behind the, the, the counter? You could be like everyone else and walk in. Some people are talking about the sport. Some people are talking about some political issue. Some people are talking about some sort of um, something that happened in the new, you know, locally or foreign news, whatever it is. And no one's talking about God. And you could, you could change the entire mindset of everyone in that gas station. When you say to the gas attendant, you could say, or to the person behind the counter, you could say, good morning, how are you? God has created such a beautiful day. I hope you have a wonderful day. All of a sudden, you're talking about God. Now, it's interesting that the Baal Shem Tov, the, the leader of the Jewish people, the founder of Hasidus in the, in the mid seven, late 1700s, one of the things, one of the initial initiatives that he took upon himself to elevate the level of the children of Israel was to specifically go and ask people how they're doing in order to provoke them, to prompt them to say, Baruch Hashem, blessed is the name, blessed is God Almighty, because he wanted people to bring that to the forefront of their awareness. So he didn't say, oh, well, people are not mentioning God uh, let's go with the flow. He said, no, I'm going to change the flow. I am going to bring to people's attention. And how are you today? How is your horse? How is your wagon? And the person is going to be prompted to say, Baal Hashem, blessed is the name, blessed is God Almighty. Right? So the same thing is for us. We are all the disciples of the Baal Shem Tov. Our job is to elevate each person, to bring them back into their proper focus so when you walk into a situation when you walk into whatever it is if, if a person is going into a gas station if they're going to buy something if they're talking to family on the phone they're going into court if they're if they're, whatever their situation is they're sitting at the dining room table with their family they bring god into the focus of the discussion that is where the answers are because when each person is talking about God, then they are now going to become aware that they're created in God Almighty's divine image. They're going to become conscious of that. They're going to become aware of that. They're going to start to make decisions accordingly. Better choices. They're going to start talking about God. What does God want from me in this moment? What is a godly response to this particular situation? You're shifting the entire experience of everyone in your family and everyone around you and everyone in the the culture as a whole and so that's what our job is now so that's why it's so important to take rabbi stipe's words over here to heart because this is what our mission is you see there, there is a a an approach that says okay Look at what's going on around us. If you read over here, he says, look at the terrible things that we're seeing. And this, this, these holy books are written 100, 150 years ago that we're quoting from here. That, um, that we see the, the, through our sins that the generation, that the, 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 the generation is, is breaking out of the guidelines that God Almighty has lovingly given to 
to um, to the children of Israel and to the world as a whole. And we see what was happening in those times that the, in order to try to seduce the children of Israel away from the service of God Almighty, they were offering all kinds of foreign movements were starting like the forum and conservative and so forth that were coming to try to convince and they're starting in Germany to try to convince the Jewish people that they should become like the like the German non-Jews and they should be integrated with everybody and they could become one with everybody. But the end result was the entire collapse of Germany. In fact, the, the um, Torah sages at the time in the, in the 1830s warned that there would be a tremendous calamity would come upon the Jewish people from within Germany as a result of these efforts to, to, to convince, seduce the Jewish people to emulate the non-Jews. So as you see that those movements were very successful, unfortunately, in Germany, and then they spread to other parts of the world. And that we see there was a tremendous calamity that came to the children of Israel that arose from Germany. Why? Because it's you, you, people might think that it's God Almighty is coming to punish the children of Israel because they um, became tried to become emulate the, the ways of the non-Jews. But they have to understand that if the Jewish people, if the children of Israel, are not standing strong and 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 showing an example of how proper conduct is going to be, no matter what, and setting that example for the Jews and for the non-Jews, the entire civilization collapses. What, what happened in Germany is the result of the lack of the input of the children of Israel into keeping Germany on the right track. So it starts 100 years before but when, when a Jew says that he is going to try to be like a non-Jew, then he can't be an influencer because he's, he's not influencing anywhere. He's being influenced. And the end result is that, that the non-Jew now has no moral influence that taking him in the right direction. And the end result is the collapse of the civilization. So that is what we see happening in America also. So the answer is to make sure that to go to the, to be clear about setting a godly example and to continue to act that way and to bring uplift other people around us to talk that way, to dress the proper way, to um, look towards the future the proper way. So that comes back to an ex another example that we were talking about before we got uh, to the beginning, a little bit of a discussion we were having here. And... We have to make sure we ca we cannot sit with negative anticipation of bad things happening, although it's tempting to that. And every every people have different personalities, and some people's personalities gravitate towards that. But the service of God Almighty is to overcome our personalities. The purpose of the service of God Almighty is not to find a way to justify our personalities and our character traits. That's not that's not what the Torah is here to do. The Torah is here to direct us to be, go beyond what our personalities are, to go beyond what our inclination would be, so that, therefore, we have to say, okay, yes, there are things um, that are in the world that are not, people are, have bad plans. That's always been like that. So the question is, how are we going to turn around that situation? We have to be serving God Almighty with joy. That's what our responsibility is. Now, you're going to say, but you don't feel like doing that because you look at all these circumstances and you look at everything and you say, oh, and you find, you're going to find speakers online that are speaking about doom and gloom. So this is exactly what Rabbi Steif is coming to tell us over here. Don't go in their ways. Even if they might be saying things that are true. But the way of those who have gone away from the service of God Almighty is to speak in a way that assumes the negative outcome. Because we see that the prophets always spoke about the positive outcome. Even in the midst of relaying God Almighty's message meant to wake people up, it was always a positive, that the positive is possible, that all the negative can be short-circuited. We don't have to go through the negative we don't have to go through the disasters. 
On the contrary, we can go straight to the positive. We can experience the positive right now. So each one of us has a choice. Do we want to walk? Do we want to live? Do we want to be thinking in the ways of the Torah right now? Every human being has this choice. Where? What do you see? You see the hand of God Almighty. You see everything is coming from God Almighty, that you are being created by God Almighty lovingly and intentionally in every instant from nothing, and that you're given the ability to love and the ability to be caring and compassionate and to be joyful and to make that your theme and focus of the day. That is the choice that we have. That is the way of the Torah. That is the way of the children of Israel. And that is the way of all the human beings that want to go in the ways of the service of God Almighty. So this is where we have to, this is a practical application of this, what the Rabbi Steif is writing about. That, that <clears throat> staying, staying, tra staying on track, staying focused on the positive, staying focused on the joy, staying focused on the joy of life on every breath, that is the service of God Almighty. And that's where we have to remain focused, focus our energies. Just going to look in the comments over here. So yes, a great point over here is the concept of blessing Hashem at least 100 times a day. Not that we should just count, count just mechanically, but that we should focus on what we have available to us for which to be grateful to Him. So if the blessings, 100 blessings a day is a beautiful point, Yechelen, and you're bringing out that that's something that every person has the ability to make those blessings. There's 100 things to worth blessing God Almighty for in, for every person, no matter what situation they are in. Right here, right now, there's a hundred things to bless God Almighty for. And that is, that's that's a beautiful point you're bringing out. That that positivity is, is what the terror is coming to bring to the world. You see, we can become this very gloomy and, this, and, and we see people like this and they're talking about God is like a punishing God and we talk, they talk about God and the, you know all the bad bad people out there, and they're somehow they're they're under the they believe that there's the foreign forces that are running the world and so forth, and the end result is that they lose sight of God Almighty. They start to create a mindset as if there's somehow powers in existence other than God Almighty, and they are themselves creating that power. They they're because their hearts are are not happy. Their hearts are dimmed. Their joy is dimmed by the choice, what they're choosing to think about it. And then they're walking around feeling very self-righteous because they're aware or more aware than other people of what's really going on. But the fact of the matter is they're not aware. You see, this is the ironic thing. People think that they're aware of what the flat, what's really going on in the world. But if you're focused on the negative, then you're not really aware of what's going on in the world. Because the world is a beautiful, positive place. It's been created by God Almighty lovingly and caringly at this instant, every single one of these human beings. So when you see that in yourself and other people, then you're going to speak to them in this way. You're going to look at them this way. You're going to uplift them this way. You now become a beacon of hope to each one of these people. And that's what why it's so essential. It's so essential that we don't follow after what other people are doing and their ways of talking. So when, when someone, let's say, has is influential, um, and, and there's people who become aware of what's going on, in, let's say, in health and, and matters of health and what's going on in politics and economics and so forth, you have to walk into each one of those situations. When you're speaking, when you're going to share, it's not just, you can't just share with those other people facts as you see it, or a scientific ideas or health ideas and, and as a kind of a true counterpart to the to the to the negative people's ideas what people are expressing their negative ideas or fear mongering and so forth. it's not just that you have to bring god into the conversation you have to bring that there's a loving creator that god almighty does not create the world in order for them to be suffering the 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 whole idea that there's these mysterious you know massive health issues that are sweeping the world contradict the knowledge that God Almighty is bringing goodness to the world. He is not bringing these plagues into the world. 
just if you knew that, you don't need to know anything about the data, don't need anything about any of these kind of things. You just need to know that it contradicts the goodness and the reality that God Almighty is bringing to the world. And as a matter of fact, if people just knew the goodness of what God is offering them every moment, if they were saying their hundred blessings with sincerity and, and intention towards the divine, then towards God Almighty and appreciation, they wouldn't get sick in the first place. <laughs> it wouldn't matter what they're being told. They wouldn't even pay attention to what they're being told is, is floating in the air because they would be connected with God Almighty. So our job is in each one of these in each one of these occasions is to see as an opportunity to speak about God Almighty. And we can't just say, oh, in your own private life, you know about God Almighty, but you're coming to a place of different people who um, think that they're academically inclined and they're going to talk about this, this uh, thing and that thing and this health thing and that health thing, but they forgot about God. So you think that you're going to just go and 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 be more accurate than them and more intelligent than them and more on track than they are, but not going to talk about God because they're not talking about God. So that's a missed opportunity. That's following in their ways, in the ways of people whose are their actions and, and their thought, speech, and action are foreign to the service of God Almighty. You know that there's a God. So your job is to speak about God openly. And that's the most important thing that a person can walk away from the whole conversation. The techniques of how to heal a person that's lost sight of God Almighty is only necessary because unfortunately, tragically, they lost sight of God Almighty in that particular area of their life. So the technique itself is not the solution. The solution is to bring them back to the recognition that there's nothing besides God Almighty. So this is what each one of us has the ability to do. So this is where we'll conclude today. But this is such an important point. Then every aspect, uh, we can go back and watch the other videos. We've spoken about many different parts of this. But this is essential for every human being to stay on track, to recognize that there's nothing besides God Almighty to recognize that by definition, therefore he must be joyous. It says, strength and joy and is in the place of God Almighty. Well, every place is the place of God Almighty. Therefore, I am strong and therefore I am joyous. I'm rejoicing in a constant state of rejoicing. That is what, what we are meant to be doing. That's, the, that's what King David is telling us. That this is the joy and the strength that comes from knowing that God Almighty is with us. Because there's nothing besides God Almighty. There is no place that's not the place of God Almighty. And when you feel differently, then you realize, and each one of us needs to realize, it's because we're choosing different thoughts that are thinking thoughts of inaccuracy. But some of us have been raised incorrectly to thinking that when we're happy and joyous, it's kind of like childish. When we're serious and down and we've got all these weights of the world on us and we've got all these serious things to contemplate, now that's being adult and mature. But the opposite is the opposite is the truth. The child has it right. The child is easygoing, skipping through the fields and is able to forgive people, is able to move on, does not holding grudges. Didn't learn that that's somehow what's supposed to be done because the child is is in tune with the service of God Almighty. What happens is the child gets starts getting older and they start to learn, start to see that their parents are, have the lines in their head, forehead from thinking, worrying thoughts about their relationships and about the economy and about the mortgage and about the food and about the health and all these kind of things. The child says, oh, I want to be like them when they grow up, when I grow up, because look, they're like adults, you see? They get to drive a car, and they get to make a family, and they get to worry about things. So the child makes a mistake. This is a mistake that we make. We think that, that everything that the adults are doing is what we're supposed to be copying. No, on the contrary, we're not supposed to be copying it. That's just a mistaken attitude, a loss, get, getting off track. This is what Rabbi Steif is talking about over here. Don't get off track of what other people are doing. We have to stay simply Back in, in connection with the service of God Almighty. Like it says over here, those that are simple and, and, and straightforward 
in the path of walking in the Torah of God Almighty, they receive the reward on their walking in the way in the good way. And the reward is not just their future reward, it's a reward right now of the experience of the goodness of life, the happiness and the joy of life. So this is what we are, this is what we have the opportunity to inculcate into ourselves, into our children, to our grandchildren, and to the people around us, and to bring every human being to recognize that the, what we're all praying for, the times of the coming of the righteous Redeemer Mashiach, and the redemption for the entire world is going to be a time of great joy because we're going to stop worrying about the things that we decide to worry about right now. It's You see, it's not just merely that uh, right now you have $100 in your bank account. The share is going to come and you have a billion dollars in your bank account. We know that a billion dollars in your bank account today is not going to end your worrying. In fact, you'll probably worry more with the billion dollars than with the $100. But when Mashiach is going to come, you're not going to worry because you're going to see that there's nothing besides God Almighty, that there's nothing to be afraid of, there's nothing to be worried about. And that's what we could experience right now. Each one of us could experience that. We could say thank you very much for these incorrect ways of the heaviness and the ways of worry and the ways of um, dread and the ways all these negative anticipations. And we could say thank you very much for trying to... Uh, to help me, but it's not helpful because I'm losing out on the moment, this very moment right now, here, right now is God Almighty. And he's providing me with everything I need right now. I have such goodness. I have a hundred plus things to thank God Almighty for right here, right now. And I have people around me that I can be focused on the positive on and uplifting them so that I'm not walking around the whole day with this negative look and this negative look on my face, I could be bringing the positive to the forefront for myself and for them. And I don't have to change what they're thinking because they're automatically going to see, oh, someone's thinking positively. After a while, they're going to realize there's, there's a value in the here and the now of seeing God Almighty in everything. This, my dear friends, is the path ahead of us. This is the path that the Torah, is, the Torah of God Almighty is putting every human being on this beautiful path. And our job is stay on that path to in a in a way that's beyond reason stay committed to that path and and share that path with everyone else any questions before we go okay all right bless you all see you later in the week we're going to see uh hopefully each other wednesday night we're going to be learning the uh get back into learning from the sitter from the prayer book on Thursday night, we have the leaders meeting again. Make sure that you're watching the videos, please. If we sent around the link for the uh, joining the WhatsApp group. Everyone gets a chance to join the WhatsApp group. It's just a way to communicate more quickly. Uh, then email, it's a little bit more um, spontaneous. You send the links and so forth and inspiring messages. And we look forward to seeing you all on Thursday night. We'll be hearing your comments. God bless you all. Thank you very much for being here. And let's hear good news about spreading the joy of life to every single human being. God bless you all. Thank you, Rabbi. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you for being here.